Hello? Okay. Okay, so hello everybody. Um, my name is Valentin and this is Nina. And we are from the University of Applied Sciences from Austria. And we're going to show you our project now. It's a little bit different than what, um, what was actually the plan to do. Um, our project was about uh, connecting legacy devices or uh, legacy um, laboratory devices to fire. So uh, what you can see here are um, standard devices or laboratory devices that you can see in small, um, at small practitioners, uh, small doctors. They don't have too much money to invest in new devices uh, every couple of years. And also, uh, this is a very common site, um, for example, at vets, clinics, uh, or um, doctors like that. So we created an IP interface for um, serial laboratory devices by using um, a Raspberry Pi or Banana Pi in our case. Um, and this, devi uh, this our device um, actually manages to um, to connect multiple laboratory devices that have uh, a huge range of um, a serial uh, uh, communication protocols. Uh, for example, you could connect, uh, you could e even connect um, printer outputs from those devices to our um, Raspberry Pi, and it will uh, then convert it to a, a file resource and send it to the server. So this is our. Uh, a small diagram of how our uh, program works. Um, first of all, you have the laboratory device. Um, it is connected over, in our case here, as a test case over a serial port over USB to our Raspberry Pi. Um, you could also connect it pr probably over USB, um, infrared, or even TCP IP, but it has to be um, a, a serial port in any case. And then it gets um, parsed. Um, this parsing part uh, has to be uh, configured by the user. Um, the, second, uh, the second step is then converting it to an internal um, uh, file format or a format to, to store the data. And then the last part is to convert it to fire. Um, and then to a fire resource and then send it out to a fire server. So it does not get stored every time. Um, it's also, it's, um, What's important to say here is that a lot of uh, laboratory devices, uh, it's possible to input some number or an ID number. And we take this ID number and um, use it as a way to re reference the data to a, p a patient. Um, this, uh, you can see it later in an example, uh, and we will show it uh, to you now. So this is a device that we created. Uh, you can see it here. It's a, it's a small emulator device for um, uh, in, instead of bringing a laboratory device or a laboratory machine here, we created a, a, a device for this special occasion, um, and it's just an Arduino that sends the data uh, from an SD card to our Raspberry Pi. So this is the data that the uh, Raspberry uh, that's stored on the SD card. Um, the, uh, the Arduino reads the SD card and then sends the data over a serial port to the Raspberry Pi. So, yeah, and as you can see, there are some values in the generated data. Oh, this side. And um, important for us is that we first save it as an internal, in an internal format in our Pi, and we use a JSON and only try to pass the very the important relevant stuff. So what you can he see here on the right side is the internal format. And in this case, the data or the measurements um, contain two values, uh, one CCRP and T4 value, as well as a person ID. This is also a fire ID, um, test name of the test, and a date time. In the next part, we um, transform this internal data to a valid JSON resource, and this is an observation resource. And this would look like this. This is already the data that we sent to the server. And as you can see here, um, they are both observations. Um, each has the value 1T4 and CCRP. They have a reference patient, uh, volley quantity. And <laughs> because it is possible to have maybe values that are somehow related or connected, 
we solved this problem um, in a way that we made a related attribute for for multiple data. So this has a, has member function um, type and reference to each other. So yeah, and if you start your program, you can always look up what is happening. And the first, the home view of our uh, web site is um, a way to see how many um, files have already been sent to the fire server. And when you log in, you have an overview of how many users uh, exist and devices and test data. And in this case, these are all the uh, test data that couldn't be sent because, for example, the person ID doesn't exist on the fire server. That's always, uh, it has to be a valid person ID. In that case, uh, we can click on one of these uh, measurements and then resend it with a different person ID. Um, that's how it looks, so you can change the field person ID here and if you click save, it will automatically send. And as Valentin Volunt has already mentioned, if the person ID is not valid, it will, will still be stored in the data in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and um, before we start the live demo, I made, sure, made some screenshots. Uh, this is how it looks on the, on the Pi. On the left side, what uh, it will be locked if the observation has been created. You can see it here, and we tried to um, find the observation also via REST via request and we use Postman and as you can see it has the same ID. And this example is with, with the base DSU3 and the other example is with the T3 test server. Yeah, before we, one last thing before we continue with our live demo. Lessons we have learned uh, throughout the program is first of all uh, you always have to structure your programs from the beginning and including comments because you will forget so many things. And another thing is that, yeah, we, <laughs> we use Keystone as a framework, mm -hmm. and in the middle of using it, we noticed that there are a lot of holes where... Co the documentation, there are a lot yeah. of holes, and we had to figure out a lot of stuff on our own, and we also had to hack uh, a lot of stuff in there um, because it didn't fit our requirements, so, well. Yeah. And Continuing that, uh, always create backups. <laughs> and <laughs> we, are, we are two persons, so it is not really useful to use GitHub or Trello because we can communicate to each other. So it's In this case, it was easier yeah. because the data was, uh, there were a lot of small files and GitHub <laughs> took a lot, a lot of time to scan all of this stuff and it was easier to yeah. just work without it. And during the hackathon, we learned uh, to test it with different Service. So I would say we continue with the. Demo. Yes, I hope it works because my laptop uh, is actually the power source for all of this and it went yeah. into sleep mode, so I restarted everything. <laughs> so, okay, uh, this is the. You have yeah. to start it again. Uh, oh, okay. I hope it's working now. seems to work. Cool. Yeah. Just one second. Oh, okay. So let's get to the start page. It's going to take, uh, when it's starting up, it's going to take a few moments more than when you actually use it. Uh, so, okay. So this is our s welcoming page or starting page. Um, we only have one device here, and what you can see here is a graph of how many messages are actually saved at the moment or could not be transmitted directly to the fire server. As we said before, uh, we don't store all messages. We only store messages where some kind of error occurred, for example, when um, a person ID is not available or the person ID that the, uh, that the doctor at the laboratory device entered was not correctly um, then it's, it's stored on, on our Raspberry Pi, and then you can change it and send, send it to the Fire server. So if you sign in here, um, you can sign in here to the admin interface. OK, 
Okay, um, you have a small overview here um, with the most important things is test data and devices. Um, we can take a look into the devices tabs. We have here, we have one device here. That's our Arduino or uh, emulator device. Okay, as you can see, I'm gonna reload it again. So, as you can see here, uh, there is a serial connection and uh, what serial, a serial port you can use, a uh, baud rate, and this stuff um, under that is actually the way how you can parse um, the, uh, the data that comes from laboratory devices. And another thing, another tab, important tab, is the test data tab. That's actually the data that could not be sent. And here you can change the person ID and then send it to the fire server. Yeah, do you want to say anything else? Um, yes, we could send it if you want. Okay, yeah. So at the moment we have the base DS23 and the person ID is not valid, so we have to use a different one. So for example, how this, this one is correct. Let me save it. And have we have to reload it. But I think the more important uh, stuff is the command line, as you can see here. Um, the resource is, whoop, is created, as you can see here. Uh, so it has an observation, it is in T4. And I think it is a single observation, so there is no mm -hmm. related attribute. Yeah. And if you want, we can also send one directly from um, our device to the fire server. However, I'm not quite sure. It is the same output on the, the Yeah, it's the same output. This way we... It we just don't save it on, on our device and yeah. then we just transmit it right away. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Questions? Yeah, maybe just a quick one, just one second. Uh, can you please make sure you use the microphone for more? Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. What happens if the fire server is not working when uh, when it when your device receives a result? Um, well, it's probably it's. Got, do you want to answer? Um, Just answer. It should be yes. I made some logs and some try catch phrases in my Minasen. Um, I'm, I think it's too long if I show it. Uh, it is an exception, so if an exception occurs, I will log it and say there went something wrong and I will show the error. So I try to catch a lot of m multiple errors. And if it doesn't get uh, s sent to the fire server, it just gets saved on, on our device. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Maximilian, this is my colleague Jacqueline and we have developed an Android app using Fire, of course. So um, let's start, um, it says to the use case, it's an application for home use for patients um, and it combines uh, blood pressure data obtained via Bluetooth from a blood pressure uh, measure device, of course, and the steps of a patient. And um, yeah, it builds a relation so uh, that a doctor can monitor the patients and see if there's a correlation between the two vital signs, um, especially, of course, for medical studies. And yeah, the file is used for transmitting the data to the server. And um, the ITH um, is the company um, which we cooperate with um, and which supports us with the Bluetooth uh, device. So yeah, let's talk about that a bit. Um, it's based in Innsbruck in Austria. Uh, with a lot of mountains, you can go skiing there, and yeah. <laughs> the guys, they are very nice, and special thanks to Patrick Magesis to make that possible. Yeah, um, now my colleague will tell us a bit about the app itself. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, but yeah, um, didn't have time to check that mirror cast thing. Yeah. <laughs> I 
hope you see something. Do you see something? Yeah. 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 It works. So should we take it as a presentation? No, you can yeah. go on. Um, Just go. Yeah, as you mentioned, um, we got support from IPH. Um, they uh, brought us the picnic device. And in our app, we have the present uh, patient admi administration, uh, blood pressure administration, and steps. And we can search for other patients and observations and devices. So I start with the patient, patient administration. Um, we are able to create a patient. Um, I start with the John Doe. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, if we create a patient and successfully do We that can't that read that. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, there's an alert dialog. Um, also, when something um, doesn't go well, we get also an um, alert. So, there's support. Um, we can also update a patient. So we can uh, search for an ID or a name or something like that. And we get a list with all patients um, which matches to this um, search. And yeah, I'll just yeah, update this part. Uh, certain devices, so in this case it's a blood pressure device. So uh, we can also enter here the manufacturer, for example, AMC Medical. Um, blood pressure monitor. Do you see something? No. Mm, not really. Um, I think we should make it with the Okay. <laughs> nobody sees it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now, um, I think you can see the app now a bit better. Um, um, yeah. There are four views. Um, the first one is patient administration, where the patient can obviously um, can register himself, can delete himself, or can update his personal data if necessary. And um, the logged in patient is then showed at the top of the view as current patient. Um, and the patient is referenced um, in device and observation um, posts. Um, the blood pressure view is uh, the view uh, where the patient can actually measure his blood pressure and register the device and um, yeah, create, delete his observations, whatever. Um, the Bluetooth connection is also implemented here but unfortunately the device has some problems and um, yeah, there, there are some mistakes that data is sometimes not transmitted and the connection is randomly just cut off and yeah. So we have just implemented a small button where you can enter the data manually. Um, the steps view is um, where the patient is able to register his step, uh, step count device or PD meter and create and delete his uh, step data observations. Um, the creating steps, we uh, usually wanted to uh, get this from an API, from a step counter, but um, as we run out of time, we just made it uh, with the built-in accelerator of Edge Phone, which is a pretty smart idea, I think. <laughs> and um, yeah, at least the search view, which is the best of all, the best of the whole application, 
Um, it's possible to search for patient observation at devices and you get a lot of data from them. And it's cool to see how you can view uh, observations of other people and just display them and that's all on your phone, <laughs> which is actually the essential thing of fire. Can we maybe show that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just sh searched the patient. Um, Especially for um, a real use, um, uh, for our homes, um, you have to implement security um, levels so not everyone can see the data of any person. So this is um, one um, yeah, important to do that. But especially, uh, as you said, we ran out of time, so we have a time. Yeah, now to the use of fire, um, I think it's pretty obvious that we can post, update and delete our uh, resources which we use, uh, namely patient devices and observations. Um, we made use of the Happy uh, implementation for Android devices, um, which works really very smooth and quick. So thank you for that. And um, yeah, we use it to transmit the data to the server. Um, results of the hackathon today morning. Um, resources from other sources might look differently. <laughs> and to create a view that covers most of the resources that exist is pretty hard because not even the ID is on the same position in every resource. So um, there's a lot of things that you have to take care of. Um, posting resources in bundles is different than posting resources itself. I, uh, myself, I didn't know that you can post resources itself. I always thought there had to be a bundle where I can put them in. Um, yeah, the R3 server is very strict and we were not able to post a bundle there. And yeah, that made us some problems. <laughs> And last but not least, um, I think it would be easier if patients would not have to search for their devices with the ID, uh, which they shouldn't see anyway. And um, I think Happy is made a thing in background and should not be in the front so that the user don't have to um, actually interact with uh, Happy and uh, Fire itself. Um, lessons we have learned while building the app is um, yeah, do not rely on legal departments of big companies. At first we had another idea where we wanted to take an asthma device, but um, yeah, the, the contract took so long that we, had to, uh, that we had to stop that project and switch to our blood pressure measure device. Um, continuous certified health devices are very rare. Um, the one we had, um, we got from Amazon, but a few weeks later we looked again and it, it there was, uh, it wasn't there anymore. So um, yeah, we were pretty shocked that they were so rare. We thought it would be right a lot of them, but yeah, it turned out it was the opposite. Um, implementing Bluetooth is uh, the worst thing we've ever done. <laughs> um, it's just horrible how it does all functions and is absolutely not reproducible and there are unexpected errors and exceptions and all that stuff you that's in your worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, and happy, yeah. Really funny to work with. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that was it. 
Are there any questions? What, what kind of user do you have in mind? Because you can create patients, and yeah. if, if, you, if you are a patient, why would you want to create patients? Um, um, you can create yourself. <laughs> 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 you can create a virtual identity of yourself on a server. Um, <laughs> at the beginning, we implemented as yeah. user. Um, something like a login with a password uh, and so on. And we switched it to patient because the, um, the fire term is patient. Um, and you can create new patients because um, maybe you have a child and you want to um, track the child's data too. So you have to create a new user or a patient. And that's the reason why a uh, user can make patients himself. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Oh, there are a lot of questions. Uh, aren't you worried about privacy if patients can just look at each other's observations? <laughs> yeah, um, I mentioned it. Um, it's. Um, bit of a problem for security. So um, due to our project was canceled with the other company, we hadn't the time to implement um, um, proper security. Yeah, yeah proper security. Um, because um, I thought um, at myself before, it would be nice if you can only see the observations and devices uh, which are referenced to the current patient. But yeah. A time factor. And the app is more like a prototype, and it's especially for the dev days where it's good to have it, the feature. We implemented it, but of course, if we would release it, we would uh, have to uh, do a lot of things to make it more secure and to make it more usable for patients. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, All right, hello, I'm uh, Jason Tan, and this is Neeraj. Uh, we're from the University of Applied Sciences of Rotterdam, uh, Hochschool Rotterdam. And today we're going to talk about uh, a little project we had going on. Uh, it's I did nothing. <laughs> it's a bit slow, I think. Yes. Okay, yes, and we worked on a small uh, project that's uh, your, your group project yeah. from school, yeah. uh, which is uh, the usage of a uh, pedometer to keep track of the re rehabilitali rehabilitation yeah. of a patient with a hip replacement. And it is to make sure the uh, patient keeps on, uh, of keeps doing his re rehabilita rehabilitation because the problem it was uh, the patient would uh, stop uh, too early in, his, uh, in the process because, he was all, he, because the patient um, most of the time thought, uh, was thinking that he was already uh, done yeah. early, right? Yeah. So we looked uh, at ways to make the patient communicate with the, uh, uh, with the therapist, the, the physiotherapist, and we started looking at fire resources and how that uh, would be implemented. And let's see, I think was, uh, or the general thought process was uh, if we use a wearable, like a Fitbit, we could keep track of the patient uh, that he actually walks the distance uh, and as actually uh, physically interacting and not just using a car, uh, and send that data to the uh, uh, psychologist, uh, the therapist. And if he doesn't, he gets a shock or something. <laughs> so just a small example to, to keep encouraging the, the patient to uh, keep walking, keep <laughs> exercising. And for that, we use the fire resources. Uh, we talked about uh, using the observation, but also about patient first. And through that, uh, we had a small, I don't think it's readable actually. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we, we tried, we tested out with, uh, with observation first, uh, using, data f uh, using data from the API from the Fitbit, and then sending it to the server and retrieving it to see if it actually worked. And the communication was pretty fast actually. Yeah. It's pretty easy. And uh, that's actually what I learned today, how easy it is actually to use the fire if, 
with the knowledge to if, if you have if you have the program. And yeah, yeah that's 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 about my story. <laughs> Another thing that we forgot to mention is we are not programmers at all. Like this is all new for us, so we we have to learn from scratch. And I think we forgot to mention that a good example is like Google is the best friend when programming, and that's one of the things that I learned. Yeah. And we learned a lot, actually a lot today. That's a lot e uh, to use. Uh, it's a lot easier to use fire than it actually looks like on uh, paper. on paper. And th I think that's wonderful. I was just wondering, you mentioned that uh, you're sending this data to the EHR server and that potentially the uh, EHR could notify, or the, could warn the patient in case they weren't uh, active enough. Were you able to test filing to any EHRs or what did you use as you're testing for where the observations went? Uh, we haven't been that far uh, yet, no. right? That was like our, our error, that's, that's where we uh, saw that we don't, are not the real programmer. So <laughs> That was like our, our pitfall a little bit, but like the first part we, we did get only like to communicate really with, with the resurgence was like uh, no problem, right? the, the retrieving. Yeah, the retrieving part was like we didn't get like that part. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Hello everyone. So my name is Buba Karso. Actually, I'm not from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Senegal, so but I live in Japan. Yeah. So today's presentation will deal with uh, how we can map uh, post-pregnancy weight loss data on fire. So and then to do that. <coughs> What I'm trying to achieve here is to, to get some data from a normal body weight scale and then uh, store them on a relational database and map them on fire. This is, uh, this give us maybe CD element here, a patient and then a non-medical data and un unstructured uh, data, okay? Uh, because uh, why we have here uh, unstructured data? Because the device that I'm using is a very simple that you can get from Amazon or anywhere you want, okay? And then uh, the data that you will get, and sorry, in the database, it's most of the time very difficult <coughs> to exchange. So it's why here, the first thing that I will do, file them all in the same block. So to do so, I have here my relational database uh, with some patient uh, and then a device, one device, and a body weight for one month. How I got this data is very simple. I ask to one of my, I can't say my patient, but let's say, okay, my friend, okay. <laughs> so to, to get her weight for one month and then after that, uh, we try to map the data. The most important thing here is the device because already we have a, we have a observation resource for weight and we have a patient. So now the problem is here the device. So for the device, I just identify the device type and the company name, the model, uh, the device version. So for the device type, I use the type from HL7, right? And then the company name is the manufacturer for, from the device resource. And the model number is the model from also the device resource. So this give me this model. So for one patient who can record more than one observation, and then one observation is from one device. So let's see now how the mapping function will look like. It's simple because I just use a, 
uh, uh, I resource from from the Vanku server and map my way to observation and my device to a simple device resource. And for that, the most important thing here maybe is the device code with uh, this one, this guy, uh, from the snobmate.m4sct. So let's try to do some practice using uh, Postman. Unfortunately, I did not build a front end, so <laughs> let's use Postman. So I'm, you, I'm, I'm working on local. So the first thing I've, after every fire, fire uh, after building every fire server is just to check the capability statement. And then this, capa this capability statement show you that now your file server is working very well, so you can go on and create whatever you want. This is, I try to get my first question. And then the first question is here. You can also see like the patient name, birth, date, and then the uh, uh, family name. So let's try now to get some observation using the patient ID because I have like uh, four or five patients, but I use only one. So to do that, so I search here by the patient ID, and then you have a bundle of all resources recorded from, uh, for one month. This is, okay. So now the second thing is to try to send this data to a file server. So let's use maybe Happy Fire to send this data as a patient. And then let me remove maybe the ID. So, and then send to Happy Fire. So it's created with another, with another ID. Uh, ID. So if you do that, so you can also uh, retrieve all your data from also Happy, Happy Fire. Uh, we come back to this observation. So, okay, this is my capability statement. And then, the yeah, is an example of my passion for the observation bundle. And then for the device also. You can see it here, the information from the de device. Oh. This is also, the happy file server I use to send one observation. And then this is also biohealth.net file to send another observation and it's always created. So from today, from the hackathon, I just try to send the observation resource to Graham server, but not possible. <laughs> I got some Operation outcome. I I was trying to see what's going on, but maybe I have a lack of validation of my of my resource. So anyway, I also try to retrieve data from this server. I think it's from Sudan, from Germany, right? Yeah. And then the lesson learned is how to map relational database to fire, and also how to support chaining research. And also what I learned here in, Jap uh, in this dev day is that fire, they have a great community. <laughs> so because I was learning fire more than two years, I remember the first day. So uh, I was trying to, to, to learn fire. So it was very difficult because everywhere I go in the, in the website, I click in the link, he give me in, in the another link. That means it's very, very, very big. I saw, okay, maybe this is, very difficult to learn, but after I just found out that is not too much difficult. So, and then so I keep learning also, learning more to be uh, to go with fire because it's also growing too fast. <laughs> so thanks. This was my reference, and then yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
So did you create your own fire server? Did you use one fire server? I'm yeah, yeah, sure. I use Vong server. Okay. Yeah. yeah so you created your own implementation of Vong server, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, then we both also wish you welcome to our presentation about V4Me. V4Me is a synonym for Vital Data for Me Data, and what this means, you will hear it in the next few minutes. He is Martin, and my name is Tobias, and we are students from the Bern University of Applied Science in Switzerland. In the next few minutes, we will talk about our sensor, which you can see at my arm, and <laughs> to uh, the file server, our use case, uh, you will have a chance to look at our app we programmed, the generated file object, the lesson learned, and what happens next with our project. Yes, our sensor is a uh, real medical device from the Swiss startup company BioVotion. Um, with just one sensor it's possible to measure more than 22 vital data and parameters and it's available as a sport and fitness and lifestyle product and also as a certificate medical product. Um, as I said there are more than 20 parameters you can me measure for example the heart rate, your, heart, uh, your blood oxygenation, your skin temperature, your respiration rate and so on. So now I want to talk about um, our fire server, MeData. MeData is founded by the ETH Zurich and the Bern University of Applied Science in Bern. Um, so MeData enables you to uh, get all the um, different health relevant data, or other personal data in one secure place. And you can decide uh, to share this data with friends, with your physician, or with researchers uh, by providing access to subsets of your data. So you don't have to get all the data to the research, so uh, just uh, this data that, that you want or that he needs. So in that way, uh, you can contribute to the development of new treatments for our health. So we had a use case for our project with the University uh, Hospital of Zurich. And um, we had, um, uh, that's with the Department of the Neurology, they, um, had a lot of patients with multiple sclerosis, and the exercise was to obs observe and, and record the this year's pattern of relapsing uh, form of multiple sclerosis. So the main goal of this project is that a better understanding of this this year pattern, and in the medium term future, uh, we try to make uh, predictions to of those this year pattern, so that we can uh, help these people better. So what can our app do is basically we get the data from the BioVotion sensor of our um, patient uh, to his device via Bluetooth uh, interface. Our app gets the data and transmits this uh, to Fire. And uh, through um, a REST web service goes this data to MeData servers. And after that, the University Hospital Zurich and our uh, stakeholder, Dr. Andres Lutorotti from the Department of Neurology uh, could use this data for uh, research. So now, yes, now we come to the not alive demo because of uh, accidents, danger and so on. We have uh, prepared a, s a short movie for you. Um, yes, we will start. After opening and logging into your app, you will come to this page that tells you that you have to connect with your sensor. It's this one. Um, you can search your uh, devices in the near, and if you have found it, you can connect with them. And you also can switch between the languages, because it's important in Switzerland, <laughs> with French, German, and Italian. On the home screen, uh, you see the um, actual measured six data we decide for. It's the heart rate, the heart rate var variability, the skin temperature, the galvanic skin response, the, the already walked six steps, and the calories you have burned in the average of the last hour. 
you have also the possibility to look at your daily overview. For this, you have to uh, push on the hamburger symbol in the upper left. We decide here to make uh, an illustration about the heart rate and the heart rate variability and also the skin temperature. Uh, and in the lower part of the app, you see the already, um, already the, the, the calories and the steps. <laughs> Sorry. The last and the third possibility is the weekly overview about your measured data. It's the heart rate, the heart rate variability, the steps, your calories. Yes. Yes, if you want to um, use this app live, you can come up to present it to us and we can show you a live on the smartphone. Um, and what I have forgot to say is we have just these six parameters because it's important things for this pattern disease of multiple, uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. Adresel Torek don't need every two, uh, 22 parameters, so just these six. But we are able to, uh, to measure the others tw um, 20 or what else, number, mathematics, yes. Um, <laughs> all right, now to our generated a uh, fire object. Um, how it looks like in MiData. In MiData, you have the whole uh, fire object in, uh, in a real resource in a JSON format. So look uh, as closely we have here, um, like you, you know everyone, fire. So we have here the categories as um, vital signs, uh, what is this, fi uh, rate and um, the units uh, beats per minute. So our, and uh, then have we have the data itself, so uh, the long code with health rate, and we have two dimensions in our package. Um, why? Because we have here um, a package with 100 data, measured data, and we have here um, al always in yellow here the timestamp when the data is measured and the data itself, here 79. And we package this uh, 100 data in one package because it's um, added to reduce traffic and uh, to optimize that. Can, yes. So. Lesson learned. So what we learned, first of all, we learned a new framework, a new uh, language, uh, Ionic, so th uh, with language TypeScript. We never used them before, so that we learned in our project. Also, we had in, in school just the th theory of the fire, and that it was always complicated in theory because of all the Link and Snowmates code and so on. And then we, we have to first use here in this um, project, and it was really easy, basically because it's a, it had a good um, op, op, op overview about the whole um, fire, a good documentation, and yeah, like the other speakers said, Google helps a lot, and it's, fire is re really easy to use if you, if you um, use it once, so yeah, that's, and fire and Ionic is great together, so TypeScript works perfectly with um, fire, and the rest of the Megatron, we could um, send data to the fire server with the library of me data, that, that because we don't have all data in, uh, in our um, code for an observation object because um, we have, a, a, um, as example, we have uh, a subject. We, d we don't need a subject in our code because uh, if we locked in in me data, the subject and the patient ID is already on me data and he, he handled this one. And so we have to do a new uh, in interface for a, a new op obso observation pro um, object that we can use it for an auto fire server. So we know the problem, but we didn't have time to solve this problem here on the Hackathon. So what's next? Are we finished with our project? No, we're not. We have still things to do, so we want to optimize the data, handling better, like the traffic, and the, the, the charts uh, should be, uh, uh, looks better in the future. Also, we have to test and validate the measured data and comp uh, compare it to other devices so that we can prove that our measured data are correct and usable. And the big step up to all, after all this is that we have to do an ethical request to the Swiss medic in Switzerland so that the University Hospital Zurich can begin a study and research with our product. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, we would answer those. I was wondering, and I think you kind of hinted at this when you were talking about the subject not being in the observation resource, but how do you know how to negotiate between 
you know, the, the device, which is attached to one patient, to me data, which has the patient record that stores all of their outside data, and then to the EHR, which would have like some of the data. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, every patient has on me data an own account, and it was not shown in the demo, but you have to log in at the app, and then you are connected with your me data account. Is there questions? I know. Um, it is n it's native supported by Fire, basically, yeah. And we play around with the data if we have to push 100 data or 1,000 data, so we're still a little bit playing with them, but it's better for the traffic, yeah. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hello everybody. Here we come from Germany. We all study health informatics in on the Hochschule Niederrhein in Krefeld. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our team consists uh, first Adrian, Moritz, Simon, and me, Sören. And today we want to present our fire project about vital science. And <laughs> let me explain what kind of project or what kind of problem we want to solve based on a small use case. That's, that's John Doe. John Doe is a patient with a heart disease <laughs> and the doctor wants to control his heart rate about um, over a few days. John Doe, uh, as a patient, he has an Apple Watch to measure his heart rate every day. But the problem is the doctor can't use his data, his health data, in his system in Germany. So, and how we, how we, how we solve that problem, that we want to show you with with our program, <laughs> sorry. We have the problem that we can't use the health data, the heart rate, what, when the doctor, he need that to, to, therapist, sorry. Okay. The doctor can't use the health data from the patient, like from John, and we want to solve the problem with fire, and what kind of technology we use for that. So I can show you, Adrian. <laughs> So um, we used uh, Spring Boot to uh, build your, our application. Um, Spring Boot is a um, very cool tool to um, quickly create a, a web application. So uh, you have a container which contains everything you need, uh, your dat database, your web server. And um, all you do is um, you build a um, jar file in Java and um, you have to run the jar file and um, you have you got all your the, the dependencies you need to uh, run your application. Um, to um, we we use um, Fire um, re version three, um, and um, like uh, Zoran said, um, we um, realized it w with the um, Apple Watch. So um, Apple Watch um, offers to. Um, to use um, CDA and um, in the future Fire Native, and uh, that's a very cool future. Um, so we, we found an um, a open source uh, library to um, convert CDA to Fire and um, um, to um, host or to interact um, with our application. We use the Germ test server, um, which is um, installed for a Germ research project. So let's uh, talk about the uh, application itself. So um, we, uh, we got the appli app application and um, the, the Apple Watch and 
there's an interface um, to extract um, the, the patient master data and um, the uh, vital data to the application and um, the patient is um, able to um, push uh, this vital data to the web service and um, the web service uh, post uh, this data to the, to the, to the server. So, um, and um, another thing we got is a web interface um, to search for uh, observations of a patient and um, to, to show it. So, so um, if we um, if we start an app um, the first time, um, a patient is generated on the server, and um, the ID is stored in the storage of um, the of the app, and um, in every um, uh, upcoming um, post, the um, ID of the patient is um, sent with a um, post request. So um, every observation can map to the patient. So now we um, want to talk something about pro the problems. Yeah, some problems we had. Uh, some problems we had. Uh, it was the first a uh, app that we developed with uh, Apple. Uh, uh, Swift and um, some things about Apple they yeah, do not want that you get your actual data easy <laughs> so you have to trick a little bit um, but after some googling we saw mentioned uh, we found solutions for that and um, yeah the CDA library that uh, the, the the library to convert CDA to Fire had some issues um, that we couldn't solve, but we will in future. Um, the Fire architecture, ar architecture um, we uh, didn't know actually how to uh, map the observation to a specific, specific patient, but uh, after some Googling, <laughs> we found it out and uh, it works so far. Um, <coughs> and the data visualization, we um, want to build a graph, but it's, uh, there wasn't time for that. So, so some lessons we learned. Uh, we learned a lot about the fire architecture, so um, how to do observations, how to map them to patient. Um, we learned a lot about the Apple Health Kit, what you can get, and um, how to get the authori uh, authorize to uh, actually read and write the data from a two health kit. And we learned a lot about the RPE library to, um, for the conversation server. Uh, some things we would like to implement in the future, uh, getting CDA conversation to working. Um, then thread-based programming to, because it's sometimes a little bit slow to uh, convert the data and to get actually a, a request. Um, then we would like to analyze the observation data to get some kind of, uh, that you can warn the patient if the heart rate is too high for s uh, a long time or so. And, um, also, we would like to extract more vital data to, uh, from the health kit. And some uh, a point that we uh, would like to improve is the security and data protection uh, so that no, uh, not everybody can get the data from the server. Next, um, we want to show you a short uh, live demo. So, um, first, uh, we want to show you an emulated um, Apple app, but uh, this notebook it, uh, doesn't support uh, HDMI, so we have to use Postman. Um, so, um, I, I told about the um, generate patient um, method. Um, so uh, this uh, method, uh, this request mapping, is um, 
called um, if the patient um, opens the, um, the app at the first time. And, um, and the um, master data is uh, sent with the request, uh, so the, the family name, the given name, the birth date, and the gender. And um, when we uh, do a submit, we got a um, 201 created. And um, in the response header, um, there's the patient ID um, of the new created patient. So, and um, we're able to show the pa patient and um, the patient is uh, submitted to the server. N and next time, um, um, this. Um, we got a sample um, ob observation X XML, and um, if, if we um, post this, we got a 201 um, created and um, the observation ID. And um, last of all, we got a, a, search, a search operation, so we um, submit um, the um, patient ID, um, um, and if we uh, do the um, request, we go, we, um, we will get all the ops, oh, okay, wrong. Can we this one? Um, we got um, all um, observations of uh, this patient. So if, if we um, open the web interface and um, submit the patient's ID and um, press search. We got um, all the information of the um, patient. So, um, any questions? the hardest thing about mapping uh, health kit data to fire that's always a bit of a challenge with the mismatch the harder thing yeah. so uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, basically we uh, basically we write uh, we uh, <coughs> create a string with the uh, XML data in it and um, the two variables, date and heart rate, pasted the data from the health kit in there. So, and then simple post. Thank you. Okay. Well, hello everyone. Thank you all for coming. My name is Jelle Verbraak. Beside me I have Michael uh, Singh. And we're gonna give you a presentation about uh, mapping my signals to five resources using a web application. So first of all, I will give, uh, we will give a short introduction and discuss our methods, uh, follow, followed by the results, and we will finalize with uh, our experiences. First, I want to start with a question. Do you know what is this? <laughs> Anybody? A pressure cooker. Yes, it's a pressure cooker. <laughs> And uh, why do I show this? Because we felt like we were in a pressure cooker there <laughs> for one and a half week. Because um, yeah, we only had uh, 10 days to develop uh, an application with one team. And we uh, have to do a lot more than only a, uh, making a product. But we will come to that later. Uh, our team, who were they? Here do you see them with uh, Jelle and me, of course. But our main uh, developer was uh, Stijn Karel. He's over there. And uh, the rest of us, we tried to support him for as uh, good way as we could. But I will tell you a little bit about that later on. So first of all, uh, why are we here? Um, first of all, we really want to be here. We think it's really fun. But uh, it is also part of our assignment of our uh, module, Biomedical Information Systems Engineering of the Master of Medical Informatics. Uh, so what was our uh, assignment of the module? We had to build an application and write a review 
about uh, literature on interoperability and uh, fire. But I will focus on the application because <coughs> that's also what we uh, have in common with uh, the fire dev days. Uh, what we had to do was we had to gather data, we had to map that data and send it to the fire server and retreat it and f analyze <coughs> the data. But uh, the analyze part uh, was not part of the assignment of today and we are uh, not done with that yet. So we'll, we'll focus on the first, first four steps. So what we did, we have uh, a uh, sensor kit, it's called My Signals, and it, it has a bunch of sensors. For example, uh, oxygen saturation, or oxygen saturation sensor, blood pressure, sen blood pressure sensor, sen sensor, excuse me, <laughs> and also a spirometer. So um, what we did, the My Signals sensors sent data to the cloud of My Signals and our web app. Uh, calls the API of my signals and gathers the data and our web application <laughs> maps the data to your fire resource, sends it to the fire uh, server and retrieves it. Yeah, our results. First of all, we would like to say we did it and we were quite surprised and happy that we did it. But now if we look in detail, what did we do? Uh, first of all, we sent the data to the cloud and we used uh, again. We used an application and we get an application uh, from my signals. However, it's not as easy as you think because uh, for one week we didn't have a license. So it was quite hard to uh, use it. So we had some time problems, as said. But when this was happening, it was incredible. So uh, we can retrieve uh, information from the cloud. And after that, we have to map it. We can uh, retrieve it in a JSON format, but it's not uh, fire standard uh, standardized yet, so we mapped it to fire resources. As you can see here, we have five measurements with a sensor ID, and this has to be mapped. And you can see one of uh, the measurements over here, and as you can see, this is a fire resource format. Uh, the next step is sending the data to a fire server. As you can see here, we tested it for one server uh, before we came here, but after the uh, hackathon, we uh, are able to send it to three of two more. So that's something. And we can also retrieve the data back. So what were our experiences? Um, first of all, we had a limited time. So in when we started, we really would like to see if we could um, get a data real time to a fire server. Unfortunately, uh, this was not um, possible for several reasons. First, um, the application for my signals only send it the data or send the data once every uh, 10 seconds, so that was a shame. And the API uh, of my signals also didn't uh, didn't support real time issues. You can say uh, we run our program every 10 seconds and retrieve the last data. We know <laughs> we tried, but unfortunately, due to the time limitations, it's not implemented yet. Uh, as Jelle said, we would also like to do some basic analysis, uh, but again, due to time limitations, we have several ideas what you can do, but unfortunately, it's not implemented yet. And it's a part of a bigger assignment. As you saw, we had 10 days with four members, but we cannot uh, go programming for those 10 days because we have to write a literature report as well, and we have to deliver it during uh, the same in the same period, so that's a shame. But overall, if you take this all into account, you can say, well, Fire is really uh, usable and easy to use if you want to send and retrieve data. If we can do it with maybe 70 days in total, we can say, and we believe that Fire is a thing uh, that can help interoperability in uh, healthcare systems. And we'd like to end with uh, our uh, new feature added this morning after the hackathon because we tested it with one server, but now we can uh, type in any server and he will uh, send and retrieve data from it. Uh, that's it, and if you have questions, you can ask them. Thanks. Um, where is my signal used? Is it used by the ambulance or? 
it's for home measurements. Um, so there's a lot of uh, things in for the patient. You can measure your own blood pressure and you can uh, connect it with the application. And in that case, you can measure your own personal health data.